Hallelujah. Yes, we are live now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. We are live, my friend. We are live now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We are live, guys. We are live. Praise, 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 praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Guys, we are live now. And really, I have a wonderful and powerful man of God with me. And I believe God is going to minister through this man of God to all of you. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on and share this broadcast and bring some people along you in this broadcast. Share this in some groups. And send to message to your friends, send them personal message and tell them there is a mighty man of God with me. God using him with a sign and wonders. And I follow him from last two years on uh, social media. He's a great man of God and a powerful man of God. And God use him with a powerfully. Come on, come on, come on, come on. May I wish uh, right? welcome, welcome, welcome. Please give us favor and share this broadcast. Share this broadcast, guys. Oh, my goodness. Number is growing very fast. My goodness. Praise God. Hey, baby, please share this broadcast. I should have shared this broadcast and uh, give us favor, honor for us. If you will share this broadcast, if you bring some people in this broadcast, I feel uh, really honored and privileged. Uh, partner with us. Partner with us. I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking just partner with us and stand with us to share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Our goal to reach so many nations, so many people. So praise TV, racing to nations, 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 to all the people. They are watching us through the Facebook and YouTube and other uh, devices as well, like Amazon, our uh, IPTV and Apple TV, Android phone and uh, uh, cable networking around the world, especially in Pakistan. Guys, send us your prayer request. Hey, Sister Lisa, thank you so much. Uh, Brother Jared, I love to say you welcome. Pastor awesome, Jared, awesome, I love awesome, to say awesome, you welcome. Awesome. Well, yes. Well, Pastor Shazad, first of all, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and just the heart of God you have. Uh, like you said earlier, you're reaching, you know, over 80 countries. 87, and, yeah. Uh, you're just really taking the heart of God to the lost. 87 countries. That's amazing. I mean, Praise God. obviously, Praise God. you said like me, you, you haven't stopped working. So I, I appreciate your labor to the Lord. Yeah, and honor for me to have you in this broadcast, my friend. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be here. I, I didn't. Yeah, I and uh, Pastor Jared, Pastor Jared, there are so many people uh, watching us around the world. And right now, I can see people from India. I can see people from Pakistan. I can see people from United States. And I can see people from Australia and especially from Europe. Yeah, Samuel Cameron from Europe. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. A lot of people watching us, and I believe God going to bless all of them. They are watching us right now. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please give us favor. We need your favor. We need your blessing. We need your love, guys. Share this broadcast in some groups. Pastor Jared, once again, I love to say you welcome, and man of God, share whatever you have the message for the nations. Hey, Pastor George from Canada. Man, I welcome you, really welcome you are uh, there a wonderful man of god with us yeah thank you so much thank you people watching us from muslim country kuwait where did you hear about kuwait i did not that is the richest country in the world kuwait wow. yeah they have a one uh dinar currency name one dinar and i think i think uh, uh two three dollars one dinar i think two or three dollars wow well, yes, sir. Uh, so people watching was, us, people watching us from Kuwait as well. So welcome, man of God. Honor for me to have you in this broadcast. And I love to listen to the gospel. I know you are on fire. Always you are on the fire. So I love to uh, say you, please bring some fire in this broadcast. Come on. Boy, man. Well, first of all, like I said, uh, uh, Pastor Shazad, I really appreciate and I'm honored to be asked to be on here. I had no idea 
who was reaching out to me over these last two years. And I apologize for that because, you know, we get a lot of people tugging at, you know, our, our, we don't know who's real and who's not. But obviously, of the whole time, God shows up at the right time. You're reaching nations uh, worldwide. And it's a privilege and honor to be on here. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. But if you're watching from anywhere in the world, go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead, man, please. Continue. Sure. Okay, no problem. But I want people to know also where you are is, I think you're a day ahead of us, right? So it's actually nighttime there, right? Yeah, late at uh, 10, uh, 10 p.m. Yeah, 10 p.m. So just to show how intentional, how intense, and how on fire you are for the Lord. Here you are going back to the office at 10 p.m., getting up in by here in California, and it just shows you that God has people positioned all over the earth for the kingdom. And if I could just take a moment, just a moment, I want to share a little bit about the presence of God, because if we're Come on. being, you know, viewed around the world, some people may feel they're all alone. And I know that as long as we carry the presence of God, we're never alone. We have everything heaven has to offer right there with us, whether you're, Praise God. you're in a room by yourself, if you're out in the field by yourself, if you're watching in a hospital by yourself, the presence of God is with you. And that presence of God brings the environment of heaven to you and I here on the earth. And we have to have the faith that comes from the word of God. You know, I thought about some of the things that God might have me share because I didn't know exactly what I'd be doing. And just to have you say, open up the platform tells me that God wanted me to share something with me this morning. And I have a, uh, when I first moved here, the grapevine, I didn't know how to water it. I didn't know how to work with the grapevine. The grapes were there. I didn't put them there. They're already there. But I used to just water it. It gets hot here. It's a valley. And I would just water it. And I was wondering why the grapes wouldn't grow. And every time they grew, they would die right away because I was just watering it. But then somebody came and told me that the reason you're not getting the fruit is because you're not dealing with the root in the right way. So I began to dig Come around on. the roots. I began to flood the roots with water. And what flowed through the roots now started to produce in a new season, better fruit. What I learned from God, and I think we can learn today from the presence of God in us, is that he come said, on. I am the vine. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. I am the so, vine. Come on. Come on. <laughs> the, the, the vine is the source. The branches have what flows through the vine to produce the fruit that God is asking. So the reason I'm saying this is there came a pandemic and I had to examine myself. And God told me to begin to look at my identity because you've got to learn that you are who I say you are, says the Lord. I thought what I was doing as a pastor was who I was. But he says, no, who you are makes you do what you do. And when you realize who you are, the greater work you'll do, grace will flow in a different way. Miracles will flow in a different way. Healings will flow Come in a on. different way. But my relationship with God would be in a different way. God's talking Praise to me God. this time. Pastor Shazad, he's passed. Right now, God is about fatherhood. He wants to father us as sons on the earth. Doesn't matter if you're man or woman. He wants to father us. And wherever God is, we have God's you know, protection, we have God's provision, and we certainly have God's wisdom in whatever we face, no matter what's happening. I don't know what's going on there or anywhere you are in the world, but you, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, carry the presence of God. Some may dispute that, and we're not here to argue and fight with people. I don't argue with people to choose what I believe. I have enough battles within my own head about what to believe. So I'm going to believe what I read in the Bible instead of trying to read it to believe it. I'm going to believe it. I choose to believe, Pastor Shazad, Jesus Christ, and he's the one that's been sustaining me this whole time I've been serving him. My God, I mean, wherever you Praise are, God. just know the presence of God is with you. Even as I look at the pictures, Amen. the thousands, the thousands in the crusades there, thousands of people at those crusades, only the presence of God can touch every one of them in a different Woo. way for what they need. And I see greater things happening. We're coming to the end of a dispensation. And the Holy Ghost is ready to start filling people with a greater purpose for God. I feel that. And I'm sure that you have felt that. And that's why you've been laboring the way you have on your TV show, getting satellites. Amen. That's a 
awesome thing you're doing. You have not one satellite, you have a few satellites. And you're reaching the world. Not just who you are. Well, let's take a second and just begin to thank the Lord for his presence. Thank God that when people walked out of my life, that God never left me. Thank God that I'm a walking environment of heaven that I can demonstrate to a world that's struggling, that's hungry, that's unsure, that's uncertain, that feels deceived, that feels unloved, that feels abandoned. But God said that we bring all that God is, all of his love, all of his grace, all of his mercy. It's all inside of us because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Man, I feel Come like on. God's going to do something wherever you are. And wherever you are, put it in the chat. Put your city, put your country in the chat so that we can see where this is extending, whether it's here now, because I know the time and day it is there. But if you see this, put your city and then put what country you're in. And let us know you sense the presence of God manifesting in you right now. Pastor, is there anything you wanted to say? Man, I'm I really, really enjoying your preaching, the presence of God. And this is a need. This is a need at this time. Everybody, everywhere in the world, people under the fear. They are under the fear. And I believe if they uh, agree with us and if they believe from bottom of heart with the presence of God, under the presence of God, I believe the uh, uh, enemy cannot touch them. Enemy cannot touch them under the presence of God. If they are afraid from Corona, if they're afraid from other diseases, and I believe if they are under the presence of God, demons cannot touch them. Enemy cannot touch them. Even no one disease can touch them. Even Corona cannot touch them if Come they're on. under the presence of God. Yes. I, I, I really, we really enjoy your preaching. Come on, man. Yes, Don't amen, stop amen. it. Well, you know, just to feed up what you said, Pastor, you know, the presence of God means the blood is present. And when they came out of Egypt, when they came out of Egypt, they posted the blood on the doorpost. And the angel of death realized that that symbol was the Hebrew letter that stood for life. Amen. And don't ever minimize the blood. Amen. Whatever you, wherever you are in this world, don't minimize the blood of Jesus. Things can happen come around on. you. He said a thousand will fall to your left and 10,000 to your right, but no harm will come to you. Earlier Praise this year, Jesus. at the last year, I had coronavirus but i also had pneumonia and they told me i had to severe to basically i should not be on this earth right now but i cried out to the lord and i said i know if i leave this earth lord i'm going to be with you but i'm asking you if i can just stay take care of my wife take care of my kids and take care of this church and continue to help the movement of victory outreach and all over the world the body of christ that i can preach your kingdom that i'm talking about the gospel of the kingdom to this world and man pastor at that moment I've been laying there. I couldn't eat. My temperature wouldn't go up. Uh, for six days, I didn't eat. I lost about 25 pounds, but I felt the anointing when I was in the throne room. And God said that now you're in the throne room with me. I'm going to send you back. And now I'm going to be an intercessor for him. What he's doing Come right on. now with us on the earth as intercessors, intercessors are almost like a defender. We stand between the problem and the promise, and we make sure that people connect to the promise. We're like a lawyer. He said, so when you leave this throne room, you're going back to learn how to operate as a courtroom for me on the earth, that people will be set free from the penalty and the lies of the enemy and that the kingdom shall come and that many people will be blessed. They'll be healed. They'll be connected to God for eternity. This world, the devil has come in and made us believe a lot of things. And I don't come sit around picking on what people believe. I, I, I believe that we serve a God that says you have the right to believe what you want. But you got to realize that whatever you choose has blessing and consequences. So I know with my, with my Lord Jesus Christ, if I choose him, I'm going to be blessed and I won't live with the consequences of having a life lived without Jesus. So I never down another person's religion. I only say, look at what God did in a broken man like me, somebody who didn't deserve to have mercy, somebody who lived a life that didn't deserve grace. But the Lord knew that he created me for him. The Lord knew that he created you for him. And he said Come that on. you belong to me. You don't belong to a religion. He said you belong to me in a relationship. You need to be connected. He is never going to down someone. He's only going to give you a lifting, a redemption lift, and lift you up and prove and prove that Jesus is Lord. I know people want to fight over it. People get angry over it. But we don't war against each other. 
why should human beings fight each other over something they say they believe? Because who I believe in, I don't force him on anybody. I know that God said the advantage we will have is we'll be able to demonstrate our God with signs and miracles and healings and wonders Come that on. no man can do. Because Jesus was marked and Jesus was validated by healings, miracles, signs and wonders, and no man on earth could reproduce what only God could do. Even Pastor Praise even God. With the, the young boy threw himself in the water, threw himself in the fire. And that means that he was going between two extremes. That means he couldn't choose which way to suffer. But then Jesus says, after the father said, why couldn't your disciples, why couldn't your disciples help my son? And most of us want help. We want help for our children. We want help for our family. But there's something we have to learn in that scripture, pastor. And that is wherever I'm in the world, the word of God transcends time. And it could be anywhere. It's the Bible's the only book where when you open it and start to read it, the author will be right there with you to help you understand it. And so he says in this, Jesus, why couldn't your disciples help? Well, Jesus obviously talked about this kind comes out by prayer and fasting, meaning identifying the spirit you're dealing with prayer and fasting. But more than that, the Messiah could only deal with a mute spirit. It was a mute spirit. There are things that Jesus will demonstrate inside of you and I to show that he's the Messiah. And then we could take that healing power, that miracle working power to the four corners of the world. Because it's nothing Come like on. having a relationship over a religion. A religion, a religion is me trying to please God with my inadequacies and, and, and just being hard on myself. But with a relationship, grace empowers me. And the Holy Spirit uses the word of God to chisel me over the years, you know, over the months to begin to look like Jesus, to begin to think like Jesus. So that when people look at you and I, Pastor, like in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, they said, something's different about these young men. Peter and them are out here healing people. Peter and them are out here winning people and their lives changing. And they said, I can't put Ooh. my finger on it because they didn't go to the same Bible college as us. They don't have the same train of thought. They said, these are untrained men, but they were trained by the Lord himself. And it says that they were doing the same thing as Jesus. So they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I just want people on this earth while I live out whatever time I got. I know I'm going to be with the Lord, but while I'm here, Pastor, I'm going to stay on fire. I'm not going to let nothing put my light out. I'm going to let the oil burn and absorb through my life so that the light of Jesus Christ will shine through the world. Listen, the whole time you were answering the prayer and I didn't know it because the prophet prophesied over me about reaching the world. And God has shown me when I first got saved, a little rock thrown that caused a ripple around the world. And there's some of you on here that know this when you see this later in America. I've said this many times. And here it was, the country of Australia and now the country that you touch all the countries the whole time, this prophet said, like Joseph, that's going to open doors. I didn't know how, because most countries, I mean, what do we do? We go and we take our vision and plant it somewhere. But God said, I'm going to open doors for you. So I waited and I was praying and I'm like, God, when are you going to answer this prayer? The whole time, you said for two years, two years, you've been following me. And for two years, I didn't know who I was missing. I wonder how many people out there, pastor, don't realize that they were not prepared for what they have been praying for like me. Boy, but I got pastor, it now. Pastor, uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited what you uh, share at this time. I'm so excited. And uh, here just I uh, want to encourage you. I want to really encourage you uh, with that word. You already received the word from somebody. God going to use you worldwide and God going to open doors for you, man. And now this is a time. Right now, people watching you in every single home in Pakistan, in every single home in India, and everywhere in the Europe, and everywhere, all Arab countries, like Saudi Arabia, like uh, Dubai, like uh, uh, Jordan, like Israel, because my TV channel working in Israel as well. So people are watching you right now in Canada, people watching you uh, through Facebook Live, through YouTube Live, through uh, IPTV, Apple TV, Amazon, and all satellite wow. and all kind of voices. So this is yeah. a time when uh, the Lord speak the word. I believe Lord, I will stand behind of the word until He fulfill the word. And I believe this is a time. This is a time God going to use you with a sign and wonders. And this is a day, Lord, made for you and Lord, for made for the people. They are watching you and they're listening to you right now yes, because God. you are on the fire. And I believe I can feel the fire of the Holy Spirit in inside yeah. of me right now. So I believe the Bible says when 
two people uh, in unity on the earth. God is also with mm. them. So I believe the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Bible says the Spirit of God moving on the hovering and the kills and the water and the darkness. Okay. So I believe right in these days, the Holy Spirit is moving on over all of yes. uh, uh, America and Pakistan and Europe and everywhere around the world. And wherever the people will call the Holy Spirit, the presence yes. of God will touch them and uh, heal them and bless them and deliver them and breakthrough will come in that nations when they will call the presence of God because yes. Holy Spirit is everywhere, man of God. Yes. Come on. Yes, hallelujah. You know, I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And you know what, Pastor? When you were speaking, God was saying, you're listening to the voice of nations. See, when God wants to touch nations, he said, in the last days, nation will rise against nation. That means ethnos, people groups against people groups. We all come from one blood. And it's by the blood of one that, Jesus, God. that we all Every. are born. And here's the thing. If we're going to unify, there has to be a prophetic word. Like when we heard the prophet Ezekiel say, he saw dry bones. Mm. Now, guys, uh, other uh, one moment, one moment. Guys, give us favor. Uh, some people says they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, around the world, especially. Guys, give us favor and share this broadcast because I can see the people from Romania, from Europe right now. I can see people from uh, Sweden. I can see people from Norway because I know them very well. People from United States, people from Pakistan, people from India. And right now, uh, uh, if people from India, and please mention in, in the comments. People from watching Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, from the Muslim nations around the world, especially. My goodness, God is so good. Guys, give us favor. Give us favor and share this broadcast. Believe me, I, I, you don't know how I, I'm holding on myself. I can feel the tears. I can feel the tears in my eyes because there is a presence of the Holy Spirit. But I thank God I, I, I really have a control on myself. I love to come to you right now, wherever you are. But before I come there, I believe the presence of God is there already. Presence of the Holy Spirit is already there. When you say the Holy Spirit, come and touch to me and fill me and give me the miracle. I believe when you will speak, Holy Spirit will touch you. Holy Spirit will deliver you. Holy Spirit will come and bring a breakthrough in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Come on. Yes, come God. on, man. Yes, yes. And now I, I know I feel the presence of God. And when we say we feel the presence of God, for some of us that are saved, that means that the Holy Spirit is really starting to minimize me and making Christ more since, you know, we can feel him more. We're more aware of him. And if you're not saved and you're picking up this broadcast, because we want to win the sinner. We want you to see the difference between having Jesus Christ and not. And there's a time that Jesus came to preach and teach in Luke 5, 17. And it said, the power was present to heal. That means that they were aware that the Holy Ghost had something set up because God had heard the cry or had seen the faith of some people that said, let's go down to this crusade. Let's go down to this church service. So. Four men brought this one friend on a mat. They tore back. They couldn't get him in one way, but with their Pastor back, Jared, they came in through the thing. Yes. Look in Pakistan how people are hungry for receive the Bibles. Look at the bottom wow. of the screen. The we are in the Muslim nation. We are in Pakistan. People talking a lot of things about Pakistan, but really they don't know what's going on in Pakistan because wow. God loves every single nation. Yes. God loves every single person. The Bible says he don't want to press any single soul. His wish, he wants to save all people, all nations, all That's countries, amazing. all every single person. So white people cannot say God is our God. Black people cannot say God is only our God. God give his son for all nations, for every country, for every single soul, for every person. Yes. If they are Muslim, Christian, Hindu, whatever, whatever they believe. But I believe in this word. God gives his son for all nations, for all peoples. Amen. Amen. Look, people are hungry for Amen. the word of God. All they receive the Bible, one Bible, but there are hundreds of hands. To words to the Bible. Come on. Hallelujah. No, you're right. And like I said, from Adam, we all came in the natural, but sin separated us. And now we're called different races. There's only one race, just different ethnicities. We're all brothers and sisters that God created. 
sin stole us. But Jesus, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, is a life-giving spirit. If he gives life, he's not trying to give just life in the natural. He's trying to give us a supernatural life that will live on for eternity. And right now, wherever we are, we have to come together. I said that Ezekiel had prophesied. Ezekiel prophesied. And Ezekiel said, uh, the Lord said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? See, when you know Jesus has touched your life, when you know you've been humbled by grace, you look at other people's lives, you see their sufferings, and you say, Lord, I believe that those bones shall live. I believe that those bones shall I believe they will live in Pakistan. I believe they'll live in Israel. I believe they will live in any country. It don't matter. I don't call them anything except their country name. I don't call them religious names. I call them by their name because Jesus knows everybody. Regardless what you believe, believe me, the one that created us for him, he knows your name. He knows you don't know him well enough now to believe in him. But there come will come on. a time and God will move in a certain way. And there'll be certain things you see, like maybe this, or maybe you might get one of those Bibles from Pastor Shazad and men who have a burden to lay their life down for Jesus Christ. And you open up that word and you realize that word is not requiring you to do anything except receive the one that died for our sins. How powerful is that? That I was in sin, that he could have judged me in my sin, but he, he says, I love you too much and I created you for me that I'll come and your place. I only want you to receive me as your payment for the sin and then obey me so I can guard you until I get you off of this earth. My God, we need to reach some people all come over. On. I'm here to tell somebody, 2021 in the Hebrew lexicon, it meant Hotson. Hotson meant chariots. When I first heard it, Pastor, at the beginning of the year from the Lord, it, I saw it, looked it up, it meant weapon. It said weapon form, but here's the thing, it meant chariots. So I first immediately, I'm like, man, after 2020, after all the persecution going on then, and ever since Jesus Christ till now, I first inclination was the enemy's going to come against us, right? And he had to be coming against us. But then about a week or two ago, God spoke to me and said, why do you always defer first to the enemy striking? I gave you a revelation of how we've already won. So I got a shirt that says 2021, W-O-N, W-O-N. We already won the battle. Our God has never lost a battle, but here it is. When he showed me about the chariots, in the old days, Christians were afraid of chariots. It would, you know, they would run over them with it, chase them down, all kinds of things. So they had a fear of chariots. Even the Bible says that uh, Isaiah said, woe to them who go down for help from Egypt just because of the fear of their chariots. Well, God spoke to me and said, but as a prophetic word, I'm giving you, think of the prophet Elisha, how he told his disciple who was in fear, said, look at all this, Lord, we're surrounded. These people, you know, this is it for us. And he said, God opened his eyes that he can see that more are with us than against us. And my friend, listen, when he opened his eyes in the supernatural, he saw chariots of fire. And God said, this is Come the on. that angels are going to work for us. As I spoke right here, right now, I said, God, when I begin to release the word that you gave to me, send those angels, send them to those countries in the Mideast. Send them to Africa. Send them all over America. And some of you right now, when you said you felt the presence of God, you felt the holy host of God enter the room with you and the spirit of God who has a room in you starting to operate as one. And we need to join as one with the Holy Spirit right now. Come on. Just begin to give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Just shout right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. Hallelujah. For not passing me by. Come on. Thank you for finding me something. Come on. Yeah. I feel it. I got to slow down because I feel it right now. And I keep seeing Come on. Come on, man. Come Bible. on. Praise God. Just see the hunger for yeah. Jesus all over the world, Pastor. My God. Amen. 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 Man of God. Just uh, as you said about the 2020, uh, and then you said 2021. And in my church, I preach about it. And Lord, give me the revelations, gives me the revelation. And I share with them. Uh, the 2021, the year is the answer of our prayers. Come on. Absolutely. The book of Daniel. Our the book of Daniel. So yeah, book of Daniel. You saw there, you, may, uh, you have studied there, and other people also have a study. Daniel pray and fast for 21 days. And the twentieth days continually non-stop his prayers answer was stopped. But when he have a day of twenty-one, 
the Bible says the angel came with the answer of his prayers. And the Bible says, he said, I am here. I came with the answer of your prayers at the day of the 20th one. So I believe now we are in My the God. year of 20th one. So if we have a prayer in the previous years, if we uh, ask mm -hmm. Lord, we need this, we need this, we need this, and still we're waiting for the answer. But I'm going to tell you guys, all the people that are watching us, this is the time, this is the year, Lord, going to give the answer of your prayers because we are in the 21. That is the so, day powerful, of so powerful. Come on. Yes. And, and you know what, Pastor? On February 19th and 20th, we have a two-day uh, prayer encounter here. Prayer is going to be a, a, just a pivotal, it's a pivotal thing in 2021 because prayer allows the presence of God to manifest, not just in us, but also through us. The power of prayer is what allows us to stay connected to the voice of the Lord. The Holy Spirit, it says that he is with us and there's time. There's sometimes we don't know what we ought to pray. But the Bible says that the Spirit knows that we're going through something. He knows that God wants to get something to us. So he says there's groanings. Man, this is the year to groan in the Spirit for the lost, to groan in the Spirit for the, the people that are going without. I know you live in a side of the world that the news don't tell us the whole truth about you. There's people out there suffering and the enemy can fight them. So men like you that are able to take the gospel to those hurting people are so important. Those pastors over there in that side of the world, your brothers on this side of the world are going through some of the same struggles, but sometimes yours are a lot worse than ours. But together, we're able to communicate through social media, we're able to say, brother, lift us up, we're in a battle. And that's why I said I wanted to be able to be used by God to let people on another side of the world know that the power of God's presence is with you. The power of God's presence is with you. He's not just there to watch you die. He's not I shall die. He's El should die. He's God powerful and he will do something powerful through you. He said to pursue righteousness. Go after his righteousness because when we're in right standing with God, we have the confidence as sons and daughters of God of the Lord Jesus Christ, to go and do the works, greater works, he said, greater, a greater demonstration. People are used to going to church, but they're only used to, in some places, the music. Oh, I love the music. Okay, that's great. But music doesn't change you. Amen. Sometimes Satan, mm, who is the worship leader in heaven, can seduce us with music. We start to think because we feel good that we are in right standing with God. And that only comes through the word of God, by the spirit of God convicting us and teaching us what is right to God. The righteousness of God is the Holy Spirit making us right with God, with the word of God, from faith to faith. Our focus on what the world is trying to do against us. Our focus is on what God wants to do in our lives in this world. So we need to reach that world. Friend, I really appreciate uh, the efforts that you and your team are putting together to reach the world. Now, I know the internet connection sometimes is not as good as the TV, but I guarantee you in the future, people will start searching to see what God is doing over there on TV as well. And so I thank you. And uh, and before we get off, whenever we do, I would love if we could have a prayer of healing for the people. Amen, amen, think, amen, Pastor? amen. Okay, uh, uh, pray for this man. Uh, he's for, his name is David. I, I met him uh, today in afternoon time. I don't know him personal before. And uh, I was in prayer with my team in the afternoon time. We're spending the two hours uh, every day in prayer in my office. So Lord uh, connected me, this man, and I called him directly. And I said to him, uh, I need to pray for you. So this man, after the call, this man called me back. He said, has said to me, how you know that? Because I'm in the biggest trouble, but in the trouble time, you called me, you don't know me, but you called me for prayer. So please pray for this man of God. Uh, his name is David, and he's from uh, Armenia, from Europe. Armenia. Amen. Yes, we will. You know, I'm reminded, Pastor, in, Re in Revelation chapter 8, how the prayer of the saints, God had had the prayer of the saints in. They were uh, just filling up. And it filled up to the point that a tipping point came where God said, now uh, your prayers, they've been heard, but now is the time for those prayers to come back to you on the earth in the form of an answer. Come on. 
And I'm here to tell you in Armenia and wherever you are, don't you give up on what you prayed for. You only take time out to begin to praise God right now for the answer. Begin to position yourself that he's already answered your prayer. So you'll be prepared for it when it comes. So many times God caught me off guard, Pastor, if I could be transparent, because it's part of our faith, the faith growth. There were times I prayed for something, but I hadn't prepared my life for it. So when it came, I didn't know how to give God praise for the answer. And so now I've learned to give God praise because once I realized in prayer and God gives me a word, I said, man, I see it. Because if you can see it, you can be it. I see it, God. Because I learned now that what God says and what God does has a road between it called patience. Sometimes we got to be patient, right? Patience is a key. God told you something. When God does something, the road in between is called patience. We walk down a patient road knowing that God is going to answer our prayers. Seven times, Come on. Elijah had his servant go up the hill. Seven times he went up the mountain, took patience. Because those mountains over on that side of the country are kind of like ours, but a little bit more rocky. You would know this, even in Pakistan. Climbing up a mountain, you know, two or 3,000 feet high, seven times because your pastor said, I know God wants to do something, but it's going to take commitment and sacrifice because I can't do what you can do. See, that's our job to empower people. Come on, Daniel and Armenia, to empower you with what we speak so that you can do the things that you've been praying for. So he went up seven times, Pastor. It was that seventh time that he said he saw a cloud like a man's hand. Sometimes all you need is a hand to touch you and say, the answer is here. The answer is here. Come on. It starts small, but it gets big. It gets bigger and bigger. And that's why I believe what you said. This is going to be a year where prayer plays a powerful role in what God does. That's why Amen. we're having a prayer encounter. You're absolutely right. We're having a prayer encounter in, in a week and a half. Okay. So pray for this uh, brother Samuel. He's from also, uh, he's also from Europe. Okay. Uh, I think from uh, uh, Norway. I think from Norway. If I'm right, so please mention in comments, yes. And uh, yes. Okay, awesome. please pray for, yeah, for his show. He's watching us from Europe. Okay. And as we get ready to pray, Pastor, let me, let me, let me read a, let me get a word in them so that they realize that this is what we're going to stand on. And it's please. in Samuel, it's in Daniel, it's in James chapter five. And I'm going to read a couple of verses, like three or four verses. And I'm going to start in Come verse on. 13. Verse 13, it says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him praise with songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the leaders of the church and let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. The reason we anoint Samuel in the name of the Lord, because you got to remember, is Jesus is the one that's healing. Come on. It's Jesus. It's our prayer goes out to open you up by faith to allow Jesus to be Lord and healer. You have to see him as a healer, that he loves you, that he knows anybody out there that's suffering, that are sick. He says, Jesus is the healer. So it says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your trespasses to one another, pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, what I want to say in that, oh. we'll pray, is that number one, you have to identify and realize that if you're sick or if you need prayer, think about why you need it. See what I mean? It's important to know why you need it. Because if the doctor tells me I have something wrong with me, and then he says, but we got the prescription, but if you think you don't need it, you're not going to take it and you can't be made well. But also it says to be open to allow us to pray. And then we're going to release a prayer of faith and you will release a prayer of agreement. You're going to agree, like Pastor said Come in the on. beginning, Pastor Shazad, where two or three touch and agree on a thing. Well, we need a prayer of agreement, too. We need somebody that knows we're touching on your situation, and we need you to agree with our prayer of faith, with the prayer of agreement. And as we do that, the Lord says, before you pray, before I pray, he says, is there anything in me that's not like God? Is there anybody you need to forgive out there, anybody, because they hurt you, Come on. because they abandon you, because you feel rejected? All these things, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If anybody's watching any of us, forgive us, because we are sons that are still growing ourselves. 
But if there's anything in you, he said, you and I must come to him, forgiveness in our hearts, and we must come with humility. We know we need Jesus' help. Now I'm going to pray, amen? Just, but I'm pretty sure people said, Lord, forgive me for my sin, forgive me for my bitterness, whatever, my unforgiveness, amen? So let's pray. Father, we come before you, and right now we have two continents, and maybe even three or four more continents connecting God. So you're reaching worldwide right now. I pray as you send out angels as I speak that the Holy Spirit begin to release the love and the healing virtue of Jesus Christ right now. Wherever you are, speaking the shoulders, I'm speaking the hips, I'm speaking to internal disorders. Some of you have parasites. Well, we take authority and we, we say, we curse those parasites to die right now in your body in the name of Jesus. We also come against cancer right now. We take authority over the demon spirit that is driving sickness and disease. We command you in the name of oh. Jesus to leave that person right now. And we release the healing virtue of Jesus Christ because given light, light, given light to those that were dying. I thank you right now, Jesus. Some of you are going to feel a little bit of heat start to fill your, your body right now or fill your room because the Holy Spirit is moving up on you right now with the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. It's being released to you right now. It's Jesus that heals you. It's Jesus yes. healing you right now. He's healing yes. some diabetes right now. He's healing yes. some heart disease right now. Some people, yes. you, they told you something's wrong with your heart. They're not sure what it Come is, on. God knows. And you had to be on this broadcast in order for God to begin to heal you. Right now, if you could just do this right now, you start to feel some rotation. Uh, uh, there might still be a little bit of agitation. But the pain that went down from two or three right now. Come on, somebody. If, I, if, if God is healing you right now, put it in the chat. Let us know what he's doing right now so that they can see in those other countries what the Lord is doing right now. We're on social media right now. And the spirit of the Lord is doing what only Jesus can do. And that is heal. Release yes. your healing virtue, Jesus. Yes. Release your healing virtue, Lord. Yes. Demonstrate your compassion to those in need. But yes. also, Pastor, I feel like he's healing somebody's financial situation. There's come somebody on. who told me, Elijah Guys, come on. was by the Show program. him comments. Show him comments. Write him comments. And God, if you need breakthrough. supernaturally, mm, supernaturally took care of Elijah. Supernaturally, he provided for him. And he provided for him. He blessed him to be a blessing. He took him from the brook and took him into Zarephath. And there was a woman there who said, we have nothing, we're in a famine. And all over the world, there's famines right now. You know, a pandemic, you know, the sickness and disease they say that everybody's suffering with. But I want somebody to know out there that Jesus is gonna bless you, but you must in return go and be a blessing because Jesus said, I'm gonna provide for you supernaturally. And he did it so that Elijah would know what it felt like. See, we need to experience God's blessing so you can take it to someone else. Because that woman and her son, needed something. So he understood what they were going through. He knew what they were going Hallelujah. through. And because God had blessed him, he came and he showed this woman how to sow in order to reap. She said, I ain't got much. He said, give me what you got in the house. And so that's what God did. He showed this woman that what you have cannot help you in your hands. But if you put it in my hands, this is Jesus, I can do for you what you can't do for yourself. Somebody needs to know the little you have. Find a place over there. Find Pastor Shazad's ministry. Sow into it. It's a worldwide ministry. You'll see. You'll see financial healing come because sowing and reaping is a spiritual law. When I sow, I reap. When I sow, that's God saying that's my law. And God is a righteous judge. He will uphold every law he has. And sowing and reaping, I know sometimes we're in countries that don't have much resources. So you have to take what you have. It's like the little boy pastor that they said, he only had a sack lunch his mama made and it had five little pieces of, uh, of bread and two little sardines in the little boy's mm. lunch to go out and listen to Jesus teach. And when he came out, Jesus said, the people want to eat. And he says, listen, bring me uh, 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 that little boy that you were talking about because you can't do anything for him, disciples, but I can. So they bring the little boy's lunch, put it in Jesus's hands. You would have said, man, now what's that little boy going to eat? But 5,000 men with their family, along with this little boy, who was the one that sold that little bit and was able to bless everybody because he put it in Jesus' hands. 
Put it in Come Jesus' on. hands today. Don't be afraid to put your life and to put your finances, whatever it is. We got to move this gospel. We got to be able to Jesus. move the gospel. We need Bibles to go. We need walking Bibles to go. Some of us can't go to other countries. But when you help with the ministries of these men that are trying to move things around in the world, it helps them be able to freely move with the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Even in the worldwide ministry in Victor Outreach, we got to have people who unite with us so we can reach the world with the vision God gave our founders. Amen. That's what we have Amen. to do. Pastor Jared, Jesus as you uh, as people can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, we're doing a multiple uh, ministries like I have a orphan school and 125 children in my school. We give them the education. We give them the food. They eat uh, good food. You can see there. So they praying for you all. They always uh, sow the seed. So uh, we have uh, we give them the school uniform, school bags and books and stationery and shoes and lots of things. And I took them all the children from the slavery like the people making the bricks. People making the bricks like Israel were making the bricks in Egypt. So uh, we took the children from there and we have them because uh, uh, Jesus really set us free. So th these children also have a right to get the good study and become a, a servant of God. So we uh, provide them good education. We give them the biblical education. We give them uh, with uh, schooling for them. And I thank God, Lord, call me to do a uh, lots of things in Pakistan. So I, I, I really enjoy with you, man. And I appreciate for your heart and you have a father heart. I uh, really see this. At this time, you have a father heart. You have a Jesus heart inside of you. So your preaching is always awesome because I follow you from last some years and you're always on fire. So this is an honor for me to have you in this broadcast. And I believe this is the day, Lord, already uh, so many people already blessed. And I can see I'll, I really have never seen before uh, people, uh, so many people like from Europe as well. But today there's a plenty of people from Europe. Yes, yeah, Pastor George from uh, America. Yes, uh, coming to preach in Pakistan. Yes, welcome, Pastor. Pastor George, he said he marched and he want to come to Pakistan. We'll welcome you, man of God. We welcome you. Pastor Jared. Uh, anything you want to share uh, then we love to say them goodbye because uh, almost near to 11 p.m. Yes, sure. And I, again, Pastor, I want to I want to thank you. We're going to continue to pray for you and for your team and everybody connected over there, the pastors over there connected to you to just keep taking the gospel of the kingdom uh, all over the world. And uh, I'm going to sow into it because I know if I put a seed into uh, you know, that side of the world that God will bless me too. And that's why I was hoping that you could put your cash app up. And I'll post that on my wall as well. Uh, yeah, there is I cash app. There God. is a PayPal. Yeah. I believe that a partnership. Sure. Uh, I'm sure people all over the world now, little by little, we're making connections. God is a relational God, the of Christ. Distant. But social media has narrowed down and made the earth so small that we can connect and we can touch yeah. the world in such ways as brothers. Amen. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Pastor Jared, one more time. I love to say you thank you so much for your kind uh, words and especially thank you so much for your precious time. I know you are really so busy. As I said, I follow you, uh, follow you from last some years and always day and night you are busy. Always day and night with you people preaching and sharing the word of God. So this is a so good to have you in this broadcast and uh, hopefully uh, we'll bring you back, guys, because I see people really enjoy with you and people enjoy your sermon as well. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, love to see you back. Thank you so much. One more time, I love to say thank you, Pastor Jared, as well. And guys, uh, keep us in prayer and uh, uh, watch this broadcast and share with us. And especially we love to uplift those. They will watch us later. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining.